I'll have to start over too. I'm sorry. All right, so we're going to start out with um, my summary of the chapter that you read for today. It's the last chapter in the book. And what I do is I say, Sophia is the goddess of wisdom. She's the one that brings them all together um, because Athena was the goddess of justice, but also wisdom and wisdom is higher than justice. And Athena had her weaknesses too. The thing about Athena that's amazing is there are stories where she admits she has a weakness and she steps down and let somebody else make a judgment. Now, none of the other gods, none of the gods do that, right? But anyway, the project, the project is to create a sustainable future for humankind. And this is super serious. Whatever other problems you all have in your particular life, in your family life, in your community, in your country, climate change is going to impact all of us more and more and more. So I have said, you know, the guys completely blew it. And so the women have to take over. Now, that doesn't mean literally women. It just means that those nurturing instincts, those cooperative instincts that women have because when they're trying to raise their babies, they have to pay attention to other people, right? Sometimes they're not very nice to them, but they are aware of them. And so, uh, so the way I've envisioned it is we have to feminize culture. We have to make it more nurturing, more anima and less competitive and adversarial and ego-driven. So that's the task. And then you talk to each goddess, okay, what can you do to help us together achieve this task? And then Sophia says, now Hera, you need to do this, all right? And, and then Hera says, okay, okay, but don't let Aphrodite do this and don't let, <laughs> right? So, so the story is that we are the feminization of culture. We have a, a reason we should be motivated to come together as a sisterhood, partly just to get through life. <laughs> That's great. Just what we need. I mean, we have one of our sisters is, is raising a little baby. So more power to you. Um, so I was raising a baby when I was in college too, so I get it. Um, so anyway, we have that task and we can work together, but just the idea that women need to create a woman's culture and uh, sisterhood, that's kind of the general idea. So I'll start out with that and I will do some screen sharing. I thought I might as well screen share. I only see a couple faces anyway, so um, I don't know why I haven't been doing that before, but okay, here we are. So I will go through this for a while and then um, and then I'll I'll stop and everybody has to make one comment, all right? Okay, so you could figure out what is Sophia going to say to Hera? You could figure this out. Okay, I respect your virtue of connecting sexuality to a commitment. That's great, it's really important, right? And we all should respect that. But if your husband, right, your hus you need to tell your husband that his company shouldn't be making uh, plastic, you know, that his company needs to work on becoming sustainable. And when you do your fun, your uh, charity balls or your philanthropy, try you should support uh, companies, events that work on sustainability. You shouldn't be using more fossil fuels to create fancy parties with fancy dresses and diamond 
earrings that are made from slave labor in South Africa. You know, you have to be socially aware and sustainable in your in your relation to your husband and playing out your role. And Hera says, okay, all right, I get it, Sophia. But don't let Aphrodite go and, you know, shoot her arrow into my husband and he goes off and cheats on me. Don't let Aphrodite do that. Don't let Athena um, tell my husband that all that matters is that he stays at the office and works on more of running the company. He's got to be home. And don't let uh, Artemis be such a man hater. Men are always bad, Artemis. And don't let Demeter um, criticize my husband so much just because he's not home with the kids. I mean, he can't do everything. And don't tell Hestia, you know, don't let Hestia tell me I ought to sit back and reflect. That's not my thing. Uh, and so I have my passion. I'll contribute. But don't let those other goddesses get in my way. And, um, and okay, sometimes Persephone takes hold of me and I do feel victimized and then everybody gets mad at me. How come a powerful woman like you shouldn't feel victimized? Well, I am, you know, it's not that easy to be in this role. So, okay. <laughs> and Sophia says, okay, okay, uh, sisters, do you hear that? Okay, don't go interfering with Hera and making it harder. And then she can do her relationship with her husband and make a more sustainable society. All right, what about Demeter? All right, Demeter, Sophia says, of course children have to be cared for. We, nobody would question that, but you can't obsess about your children so much that you spoil them, that they can't grow up and be adults that you give them all this junk they don't need and it's all fossil fuel based and you're teaching them to use fossil fuels. You're teaching them the world owes them that, right? It doesn't. So help them transition and teach them how to be sustainable, a sustainable life. Okay, okay, Sophia, Demeter says, but I need the help of the other goddesses. I feel threatened by them and judged by them rather than supported by them. Don't let Aphrodite go and, and you know, uh, shoot her arrow into some guy so my daughter is raped or uh, sexually, you know, assaulted, like, or distracted or, you know, keep Aphrodite, tell her to leave my kids alone. <laughs> and and um, don't tell Hera that I should spend more time with my husband. I like my kids. He should spend more time with the kids. Uh, don't tell Athena that, that raising kids is not important. Uh, kids are vulnerable and she's just unaware of it because she's too busy gone running her companies or something. Um, don't tell... Uh, don't let Arte, Artemis tell my kids they should be aggressive. Well, maybe they shouldn't be aggressive, especially not toward me. And don't tell, don't let Hestia tell me I'm not reflective enough. I am who I am. Uh, I reflect on my children and how they're doing. Um, so uh, I get upset when the gods and goddesses make it harder for people who are naturally oriented toward children to um, also be vulnerable. They don't give us enough respect. They don't pay us enough money so we can survive. Um, they just show that they care about money and power more than they care about kids. Um, so sometimes Persephone takes over and I feel like a victim. And um, then people think I have a victimization mentality but I don't, you know, I'm just trying to take care of kids and say, okay, sisters, get it? 
we'll ask Demeter to raise her kids to live sustainably, and then we won't judge her, interfere with her, all that stuff. All right, to Artemis. Okay, Artemis, you're the big lover of nature, right? You're the, the woods woman, the ones who's always lecturing to us that we're not living sustainably enough. Well, okay, we get it. Um, let's see. And so you give us a perspective outside of human culture, and that's good because the cultures are using so much fossil fuel that people habitually do it and they forget about nature. So definitely you have something to contribute. The trouble is you get so mad and it's just annoying and it causes a response. So you have to remember that most people, what matters to them are their relationships. And so you have to convince them to be sustainable within the context of marriage or kids or uh, running companies. It's most women are committed to things that occur within culture. So you just have to be patient and you have to respect uh, what goes on inside of a culture. So uh, please, you have to, um, most people don't live for causes, they live for people and they're not gonna join your cause unless you respect them. So Artemis says, all right, all right, Sophia. Um, I do wanna uh, help this cause and I will adjust. You know, I will compromise, uh, but you know, I do get frustrated. Uh, Hera lets her husband run a fossil fuel, uh, high carbon company and doesn't bother and Demeter gets them habituated and you know, it just seems like nobody cares. And um, so I'll compromise if they'll compromise. That's all I'm gonna say. And they'll have to talk to me about it, right? Uh, okay, all right, all right, guys. So you hear Artemis? I mean, really, Artemis should lecture us about sustainability. She should tell us, you know, we're using 10 times more fossil carbon then we should, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't uh, overreact. It's just true. We need to accept it and make adjustments. So we have to respect her and then, and then maybe, and then she has to not get so mad. Okay. Then Athena, Sophia says, hey, Athena, you could really help us out, you know, like you are hanging out with the big guys. So tell those guys that run the world that they need to become sustainable, right? Please, the rest of us depend on you to turn those men around, right? So when you're out there in the boardroom of these economic corporations, of these um, foundations, of these governments, you know, you're talking to the president, the cabinet, whatever, you've got to stand up for sustainability. Um, all right, so, um, we, so we worry about you, Athena, because you tend to take sides with the men and you can't do this or we're just gonna all die. <laughs> so, you know, stand out, say, okay, I'm a woman CEO. I'm gonna be different. I'm, you know, women are always associated with nature and Gaia and the earth. So stand up for that. Um, it's important. And so um, Athena responds, okay, I know it looks like I just pander to the guys. I just wanna be another guy, but you know, I get it. I understand this. And I try to get these men to talk to each other and, you know, I need to find one of them and maybe he'll convince another one. But I do get tired of Artemis always trying to, you know, tell me to be more aggressive, be more critical. She's so anti-men and it drives me nuts. Like, they're not going to do what I say. 
if they think I'm a man hater, <laughs> I'm not going to be very effective as a diplomat. So, and um, I get tired of Aphrodite because she keeps driving these men to have affairs and their wives get angry and the families fall apart and then they can't stay focused on running the company, much less saving the world. So please tell Aphrodite to keep her arrows to herself. Um, and so, and tell Hestia that I don't need to be more reflective. I need to, you know, that isn't my forte. I know what I need to do. It's just a matter of using strategy to get there. I have to strategize about this more than men do. Um, Demeter uh, gets so obsessed about the vulnerability of children, she's willing to sacrifice. She'll undermine the stability of the institution just for her little children. You can't do that. Um, okay, so Sophia says, all right, all right, everybody. Do you understand? Athena will strategize. She'll try to work with the guys, but you can't expect more of her than she's capable of. And you can't try to make her be more like you. You know, she is who she is. And she can come, you know, you can have a sisterhood, you can meet, and every sister tells the other ones if she's if she's uh, you know moved forward in relation to the goal of sustainability. And so don't be critical of each other, just keep supporting each other. Keep inspiring each other. Keep telling each other, okay, I'll try harder this week and then we'll meet again, right? So Hestia, all right. To Hestia, Sophia says, you are the wise one. You're the one that stands back and looks at how things are all related. I understand you've helped me see things. You've helped me see the whole and the parts in relation to the whole, but you shouldn't get so absorbed in your thoughts that you can't even communicate, that you get so annoyed at how nobody will look at the big picture, that you just don't say anything. Um, you know, you have to be assertive, and, but you also have to be dialectical. You have to ask questions. You have to, um, you know, mediate. Like, okay, Herod said this, what about Artemis over here? And how are we gonna get us, again, how are we gonna weave ourselves together? You have a place, Hestia. Um, so don't step back when we need you, but don't preach at other goddesses that they should be more reflective. That's not their forte. You can, when you come together, you can weave the stuff together, okay. You've told me this over and over. So yes, I have a flaw. It's just, it's hard for me to have the right amount of energy. Artemis is always chomping at the bit, more aggression. <laughs> Athena is just strategizing all the time, telling me how do I set up a strategy. Demeter, well, I got to protect my babies. Well, come on, you got to participate in that, the joint project here. Hera can't just stand by your man. Um, so, and Aphrodite, you know, she's just got to, um, she has to inspire us. She has to be the vision carrier, not the one who divides us because she shoots her arrow in the heart of some god. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, and then Persephone worries so much about victimization that she's so worried about the way women are already victimized that she can't get active enough to realize that if the climate change happens, everybody's going to be a lot more victimized. <laughs> They're not going to have any water to drink. They're not going to have any food to eat. So, you know, she can't get so obsessed about victimization. She's got to get out of it, you know, recover. And then we have Persephone. Yeah, Sophia says, you're, it's an important insight to always remind us how much women are getting victimized and how easily 
human beings are capable of turning into animals and really harming each other, right? You're constantly reminding people of what they can do and what they do do. Um, and that's true, and we need to remember that. But you can't get obsessed about it. You have to participate. You have to find a way to get beyond it, just like all those victimized women have to find a way. And then you have to um, participate, and you have to anticipate in the sustainable and the building of a sustainable culture, how are we going to avoid making mistakes that will trigger that bestiality in people and cause them to victimize each other more. Um, so, and Persephone says, okay, okay, I get it. Um, I just, it's just really hard for me to ignore, you know, all this harm that's done. And it's hard you know, it's hard to me even to picture, well, I have to ignore victimizations in anticipation of the future victimization. I mean, it's just, it's just a balancing act and I'll work on it. Um, all right. And then the next one um, is Aphrodite. And Sophia says, Aphrodite, you're the vision carrier, right? You're the one that should be inspiring us to create new ideas about new institutions or new habits or new child rearing practices or a new model of marriage or a new, you know, to create a sustainable culture, we need to give birth to all sorts of new ideas and a new vision. And when all you do is shoot your arrows into the, the hearts of men and get them to go after women, that's terrible. Like, that's such an abuse of your powers because you have these incredible powers to be the vision carrier, right? Um, and Aphrodite says, well, I know what power I have. It's really easy to shoot my arrows into men and get them to chase women. It's really easy to get worshiped by men. And so none of the other goddesses have that temptation. You know, I can easily be worshiped by men. Um, and women demonize me so much because of that. Like Artemis hates me, right? She went and took revenge when I fell in love with Adonis, she, you know, she had him turned into a hare and, and uh, eaten by wild dogs, like, come on. And uh, Athena, um, you know, they all hate me. And it's just because of the power that I have over men. So if you just lay up and um, just, if you just start being grateful to me when I don't do that and give, you know, give me uh, some credit if I'll, if I'll hold off and um, then I'll start, I can start inspiring, right? It's just that, you know, the goddesses do things too. Like Athena is always telling these men to stay at work and stay at work and stay at work. Well, then their marriages fall apart well, they do have a sex drive, so then they have affairs. I mean, and Demeter's always telling them, you know, to uh, telling these men, she care, I care that she cares about her babies more than she cares about him. So he's going to have an affair. Like, come on, Demeter, you have to meet his sexual needs too a little bit. It's to some extent, right? You can't just take away, pretend he's not even a sexual creature. Um, Persephone, uh, I know that men can get violent when they're under my influence, um, but that isn't my fault, right? I just cause them to be attracted. It's, it's their choice to do harm. Um, and Hestia, um, Hestia and I don't get to understand each other or get along at all. Like, all she wants to do is create ideas. And that's just, you know, that's not fair. We are sexed beings. So, um, okay. 
So Sophia says, uh, Aphrodite, your inability to make that transformation from taking pleasure to just sex um, to a very primitive kind of sex drive into the erotic vision carrier. It was your refusal to do that in the story of Psyche and Eros that led Eros to leave you and go and marry Psyche because he realized that an eros that's tied to the love of justice and the love of um, uh, the natural world and the love of children, and, you know, when eros is tied to all these other goddesses, it's healthier and it's manifested, it's incarnated. This is how people should live. And so he recognized that your obsessions are wrong. And these women are right. So Aphrodite, you need to grow up, Aphrodite. You need to use to turn your Eros from just sex drive to what Eros knows, which is to fall in love with a woman who's juggling all this stuff. Okay? So we hope that you will change and you will realize the lesson of the myth of Eros and Psyche. And Aphrodite says, well, you can say what you like, Sophia, but I know what kind of power I have. Um, so Sophia, you know, takes a deep breath. <laughs> the love of wisdom is difficult. It's a long and hard road. Your son Eros has more insight than you do. Stories are told of mortals who live through all these tasks. They keep their eyes on the sacred in the midst of the profane, and they go down in history immortalized for their great love, right? They go down with reputations as good wives, good mothers, good leaders, political leaders, or uh, economic leaders, or... Um, start an NGO. I mean, there's lots of things that lots of women do and they juggle being mortal and all the different sacred passions. And Aphrodite, maybe someday you'll learn because we'll all be a better, a better off if you do. Because if you don't, we're not going to be sustainable. Men will, men will you know, forget all about being responsible and they'll destroy the earth and they'll destroy their families and they'll destroy their marriages and they won't care. But we hope, right? We hope, Aphrodite, that you'll learn because you are our vision carrier. We need you. All right. Okay, now everybody has to have a reaction. Uh, Lillian, you think you're ready to jump into this after being gone so long? Sure. Uh, one second, let me let me finish this note really fast. Okay. Um. So I really like what I've read so far. I think you know that from like the last class we were in. I really like talking about this kind of stuff. Um, I think it's really interesting to note like what each goddess kind of has to learn for herself, like the things to change and because I really kind of not identify but I relate to Artemis in a lot of ways and I do find myself struggling really hard not to just get angry with people when they don't listen or don't like take things into account. Um, it's something that I need to work on for myself and just being patient. Um, it's kind of difficult when people don't just listen. Um, and then I also thought like it was really interesting about Athena and about how um, she is oftentimes in a position with CEO like men and dealing with that aspect. And so often I feel like even in society you see women in that position like siding with men more often and just going with what they say and it's kind of 
not a stab in the back to women, but you're kind of like, oh, I thought you would use that position of power to say something, but you're not. Um, so I think it is really important for women in those head positions to stand up and say, no, we should do it this way. We should change and be more sustainable um, and actually stand up for themselves as a woman. Well, in American politics, more women, more white women voted for Trump than uh, Hillary Clinton. And I think even more for Trump rather than Biden. And they are super, super uh, right wing. There are women who are, just seems like bending over backwards to be like men. Have you, have you read about some of them? Um, a little bit. I just kind of see it more so in action. Like I don't really read about, but I have seen um, a lot of even like small women business owners and people like that. I know women personally that um, like side with men, even after hearing them say like really disgusting things about women. Um, and a lot of them are people I know like with young daughters. So I think it's kind of interesting that uh, to see women defend men that would like objectify women and like not listen to them and show them that it's okay, like show their daughters that that's kind of okay for people to do to them. Okay. Anything else, Lillian? I think that's it. Okay, Sam. Yes, ma'am. You ready for my uh, reaction to the readings? Okay, yep. so it might be because I'm like, I, I identify a lot more with Artemis, so I might be a little biased, but I really focused in on the conversation between Sophia and Artemis a lot. And I thought a really good point that Sophia brought up was the fact that the anger Artemis portrays can become out of control and that it can be used against her in a way. And I think I see that a lot when it comes to things like the Me Too movement or um, cases that women make against men for rape and sexual assault in the sense that they just see their anger as chaotic and crazy and they don't take it seriously because they feel like it's just an attack on the like men in general. And like, obviously our anger is valid and anger is important in that sense, but I do think that it needs to be controlled in a way um just to avoid hearing the usual stigma women are crazy and i hate that we have to i wish that we could just go absolutely you know batshit crazy but we can't but that's also the like i think the artemis in me that just kind of wants to burn buildings down and scream the patriarchy so <laughs> well actually sam the thing i think about is when you're with other women those women should support you in your anger, right? And then know that when you're out there with men, you can't be. But the women should say, go ahead, you know, blow off steam as long as you're not doing it right at me, right? Yeah, and I think that, you know, women supporting women is extremely important and stuff. Um, I'm not saying like women shouldn't validate other women's anger towards things. Um, what I'm more saying is that the anger can become uncontrollable at some points. And that that's whenever you start hearing the usual stigma of, well, just women are crazy. And that's whenever people stop taking what you're doing seriously. Not necessarily other women, because you know, other women will look at it and be like, no, that's completely valid. That's important. But that's when men who unfortunately control society look at it and they think, no, that's unjustified. And it, it makes me angry. Right. But that's why I'm saying women, when they come together, right? And they're reporting in on how well they're doing on this project, then they can support her anger, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, I'm just making that, that's a big distinction, I think. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so anything else, Sam? No, I think that's it. Okay, Liz. Can you hear me? Um, I think that one of the favorite conversations between Sophia and a goddess is the one that she had with Hera. 
Um, I think that she would have been like, listen, you can't, you can't take your anger out on other women for something that a man did. So I just, that's one of my biggest issues. And that's one of the reasons that I think I don't, I either, I don't identify and I don't like the Hera archetype as much just because of how damaging she can be to the image of, of women. They're, they're jealous creatures, you know, you marry them, you're tied down, that kind of thing. Just because of how angry she always gets. And I feel like Sophia would have been like, listen, this woman did nothing to you. You know, this was all that guy's fault. That was all that guy's problem. And you need to like sit down and have a legitimate conversation with him about these things. You can't just go kill a woman. So I think that that was, that's what really stuck out to me. And it really happens, right? Yeah, it does. Also, Dr. Beck, um, Liz and I watched a TV show a few weeks, maybe a week or so ago during the snowstorm called Blood of Zeus. It's a Netflix original, but it's all about ancient Greek and the, it really shows the um, anger that uh, Hera has towards other women. It's a really good show, but it like, it doesn't, um, what I'm trying to say, gloss over anything that the gods did. And I mean, the TV show basically rips Zeus a new one um, and stuff. So it's it's very truthful in like the truth behind the Greek mythology. So I know you don't necessarily watch TV very often, but if you ever found yourself bored, you should watch it. No, really I'm never bored, that's the thing. But um, <laughs> actually philosophy is a muse for me. So it's literally gets in my way. It's, I, it's not a matter of principle that I don't watch it. I just, I'm always thinking about something. Um, but actually when you watch that stuff, I, I like that students do. And the question you ask, is, is it trying to get men to be more self-reflective and grow up? Or is it just explaining, well, this is what they used to think, or, well, this is just the way boys will be boys. What do you think was the punchline? I think, you know, now that you say that, like ask that specific question, it definitely was a more, the gods will be gods <laughs> in a way. Oh, that's and, bad, right? Yeah, it was. Now that I think about it in that sense, it was bad. I was more happy with the fact that it was really truthful about like Zeus and Hera and um, Artemis and Apollo and things like that. But it definitely did give off the idea of like, gods will be gods, humans will be humans, you know? Um, but I got, I was glad that it wasn't as, um, what sort of trying to think of. Sentimentalizing? Yeah, yeah, like, like, the, like the Disney movie, Hercules. Love that, <laughs> but it portrays all the gods as these like amazing, loving people and they're not, you know? And the TV show did a really good job of showing that they're people or they're immortals who have human um, emotions and human reactions to things. Um, but it was definitely a gods will be gods type of thing, you know, kind of a, well, they have powers. That's why they can do that. And they will do everything they can to prove that they have the power. Yeah. Okay. Actually, what's really important here, and I'm gonna talk about this soon, is that those, the poets were trying to prevent men from doing stuff like that. That's my argument. That at a certain point in social evolution, they realize that Apollo is gonna take over because societies are gonna get complex enough. So Apollo's gonna invent these techne, right? This technological stuff. Techne means a skill. And so, cultures are going to be driven that way and then men are going to have all these temptations because they're going to have power and so the poets are saying here's another way men could go wrong don't do this don't do that but so many people don't read it that way right they read it as descriptive rather than as cautionary and most white male scholars also just read it as descriptive and not educational, which just breaks my heart, right? 
especially in the face of we're destroying life on earth. Really? You're going to sit and say, well, boys will be boys. And the great Greek classics taught us that. Uh, it's just like saying the Bible taught us that. The Bible just taught us that if God at some point is going to destroy his own creation, and, you know, that's the way it is. And I just happened to live at that time. And so I still can drive my gas guzzling truck and live in my gas guzzling house because the Bible says so. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. That makes sense to me. Oh, it's really sad and really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Poppy, what you got? Poppy? Yes, Professor. Okay. Professor, uh, I in my side there is a lot of noise so today i don't want to explain okay all right as long as you, do you have any questions about the reading you no no okay no, you'll, I you'll be able to post something you know you have your own reactions you're not confused yeah, yeah. okay that's great okay claire um i have a similar reaction to a lot of the other um, students about the lack of support from women for other women, especially in situations with men. And I guess the comparison like Artemis and the conversation there. Um, and then also where y'all took it with politics. It's kind of hard to, with the example of Trump, to look at the things he said about women. And then a lot of the people, especially in the town I live in, <laughs> um to say that he's a christian man that they want they think that it would be best for him to leave them and their children and their families when i don't even think personally i would be comfortable alone in a room with him i, I don't really they understand do he's christian they do think he's christian oh yeah i mean around here anyways they yeah and that blows my mind in entirety <laughs> but I don't see where they base that off of other than him literally saying it with no backup but yeah what blows my mind is that is saying that like he's the best leader for the family and that's in a lot of situations not just him that this man has good intentions when it's obvious he doesn't and they just go along with it and don't side with the women that are speaking out about it so that was really my takeaway but yes, in a lot of places around here, they viewed him or just the people that were big supporters as a Christian man. Yeah, one of my relatives posted a photo on Facebook of like Trump praying and like Jesus standing behind him with his hands on his shoulders and being like, this is God loving man should be the one running our country. It's kind of, yeah, it's a little odd. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would say the majority of Trump supporters do see it that way. And I don't understand where to get it. Like I said, has he ever quoted the Bible? Does he, he tried once and he says, said, I think he sp said it wrong. He held He's, the Bible upside down. Yeah, I know. The church. <laughs> it's just the thing about it that shock. He doesn't even try, you know, as far as I can tell, no. he try. And that. It's amazing. You know, there are plenty of other wicked politicians who in the future are going to be a lot more manipulative, right? They're going to be yeah. a lot more convincing, but it's, it's amazing. I mean, what it is, is that what people care about is the color of the wrapping paper, you know, not what's inside the package, right? I mean, they, they are the brand, you know? I mean, it really is incredible that you buy a brand, you don't open up and smell the meat and see if it's rotten or not. It's, yeah, it shocks me, Claire. I can't, I can't handle it. Um, yeah, especially since my dad was a preacher and he, he was a good guy. So that's particularly upsetting. Um, oh, well, uh, Louis, what you got? Um, yes, Professor. Um, 
After reading <clears throat> reading their conversation between Sophia and each goddess, I, I think that every goddess and every woman around, around us, um, they all have both the good side and the bad side. Sometimes we will feel like jealous, uh, jealous of the good side and feel uncomfortable with their dark side as well. Uh, then we easily trust them I want them to live in the way that we want to, not the way that they, they really are. Um, I think it's not the way that everything works. We have to let them live the life they want. Uh, life will teach them how to change and learn from their obstacle in life to become a better person. Um, the thing we need to do is support them when they are struggling um, stand by them, encourage them not to giving up. Yes, that's my idea. That's it. So the idea is that women have to be the vision carrier for each other, right? Yeah. And um, they they have to fill in for Aphrodite if she's not going to grow up. <laughs> right. So I, I guess I want to emphasize and AUW is great. I can't wait until y'all get to get back to campus. But I hope this class really inspires you so that when you get back to campus, you're just gonna keep supporting women. You're not gonna let you know anything cause you to diss another woman. You're gonna create this culture because once you get off campus again, when you graduate, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be harder. So that's what I'm hoping. And then the women at Lyon would realize they need to hang together. And we we tried to have a woman's group at our school. Um, did I tell you that story? I think so. Um, the first meeting, there was just one girl and she wanted to talk about abortion. Well, I, I'm against, I don't, I never got an abortion, but I think it should be legal because then you are actually fewer abortions because the way you solve the problem is that you have birth control and you have teenage sex education. So that, that's how you prevent the pregnancies that women want to abort. So, you know, I just said, you know, that, that it's not really an issue of legal or illegal. When it's illegal, there's actually more abortions and the Republicans actually create more poverty. And then women, when they're poor, they want more abortions. So I know that because I've studied, I, when I was in high school, our laws changed and the number of abortions has kept going down. So I was just saying that. And then I was saying, yeah, and there's 2.2 million women that get them. And, you know, nobody's gonna want 2.2 million women to get the death penalty for killing innocent life, you know? <laughs> and this, the girl looked at me and she said, it's a life for a life. Like it was okay with her to kill 2.2 million women. And then the question is, are their parents supposed to take them to court and send them to the death chair, you know? It, it just blows you away and it's so anti-women. I mean, it, it takes my breath away. So we didn't have a woman's group on campus for that reason, but I'm hoping at Lyon, you know, that women will get it and realize that they need to support each other. But we couldn't have a woman's group with a woman who it's okay with her to have 2.2 million women get the death penalty every year. So, that was the end of that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, even though I live in America, it's supposed to be a developed country. There's some really primitive emotions that women have toward women. It's very scary. Um, okay, DT, what do you have? She is posted. Professor, can you see the chat box? Oh, no, I wasn't looking at the chat box. What did she say? Oh. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. That's right. And so, 
you know, it's, I think she's saying I, I should be able to be angry and I, it's fine. It's just, I think if women support each other, um, they don't tell each other you can't be angry, right? They support each other's anger. And then when they, women have to go out in the world and when they, in order to achieve their goals, they do have to not be angry. Well, that's okay. But as long as they can come into some subgroup, does that make sense, DT? Does that make sense to you? Okay, okay. No, I'm not saying they can't be angry. I'm saying that in a, in a group of women that support them, it, it can be like a, a valve, you know, uh, a release and also a validation. And then you have to go out in the world and figure out, you know, how to maneuver. Um, okay, May, what do you think? Uh, for me, I think this goddesses dialogue is um, kind of depicting the reality we may also have to face that sometimes like we care too much about our sacred passion about what we want to um, promote in life that that we may cause some troubles or like may make other people angry like but we don't like really intend to do that um, but I think that it's a matter of like conversation and also like just talking and discussing in a very like constructive way because we cannot really avoid conflict conflict in life it's just like how we will resolve it and i believe that if we have a community of women and they care about different things like the goddesses and we can resolve every conflict together like we can make a lot of like positive changes um and also it takes a lot of understanding from other people because uh, for example, in the past, I feel that I I was identifying myself myself with Hestia a lot. Like I was introverted. And when I was in my high school, like some of the friends also said to me that I should be talking more. I should be like communicating more. I know that um, it might be also true, but some, but they don't, they didn't really try to understand me in the in the sense that I didn't feel like comfortable like being in the crowd and also like engaging in a lot of like nonsense like commu like nonsense conversation like I prefer like meaningful com uh, a meaningful conversation where I can take something like meaningful from those kind of stuff so I feel that if um, we don't uh, don't kind of like make judgment too quickly, but try to understand it could be better. Um, we, we may not make other people angry too much and we may um, have like the solution better kind of like that. So it's what I think. Okay, another thing you could do, um, the whatever friends you've already made, or if you if you hear somebody else in the class and you really like their reactions, you can create a friend group, you know, a peer friend group um, on right on your computers and just as a support group, right? And a, so that you know that if you wanna talk about something serious, you know that, oh, I know four other women who I can talk to and they'll listen to me and they'll have something serious to say. So I do think that's important. And it wouldn't be probably everybody in this class, right? It's too many, but just a group of, you know, five friends or so. So keep that in mind. It's a way to stay sane. You know, that the part of the reason everyone has a therapist is they don't have all the people they used to talk to, extended family and all that. When people are isolated, it drives them nuts. So uh, just keep that in mind, you know that you could hunting for three or four good friends to talk to and arranging to meet at a certain point is could be really helpful for you. Um, Untari, what have you got? Are you there? I don't, okay, Lakin. 
Okay, so um, the reading was really cool to imagine how all of the different goddesses would have interacted with each other. And it made me think about how, you know, women have different personalities and how that can clash and stuff, even though they're all kind of working towards the same goal, you know, kind of bringing down the patriarchy and everything. Um, so yeah, and especially like, well, yesterday I just watched a movie about the Chicago Seven. And so that kind of helped me see that, um, yeah, people have different perspectives on how they want to get a goal completed. And some can be more moderate and like willing to work within the system. And some can be more like revolutionary or extreme to change things. That was during the Vietnam War, right? Yes. Yeah, I actually, I didn't follow it that much, but it has a reputation for coming out on the violent side, right? Right, yeah, there, there was a big riot that happened that was um, started by the Chicago police. What, started by the police? Yeah, and that's what uh, the big deal in that trial was about, like keeping that hidden. They wanted to blame the protesters themselves. Well, that happened during Black Lives Matter, too. Um, there were people, yeah, that happens a lot. You have to be really careful. I know, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I was a demonstrator, right? And the point was, had to do with all the billions of dollars in profit people were making on the war and stuff and American imperialism, that was, what the mayor of our town and the president of the college and all the religious leaders were worried about. But then it got this reputation about these teenagers and these violent people and the sex, drugs and rock and roll and all that. So it was, it, it got, you know, thrown off from the real point because the people in power <laughs> wanted it to get thrown off, you know. So that's good. Um, all right, good. Uh, Rook nine, what have you got? Oh, she's writing in the chat box, okay. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll check that in a minute. So Khadija, what, what do you have? Hello, Professor, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, I like the conversation between uh, Aphrodite and uh, Sophia. I, uh, it was a good uh, advice from Sophia uh, for, her, uh, for Aphrodite, but again, she wanted to ignore and bring her own reasons. So I think uh, there are a lot of women who want use the, the man and use from their beauty even the bad ways and uh, they don't care about the negative side of their actions. Uh, also the goddesses show the difference of the differences between all human and allow us to know more about the differences uh, personality because by the reading of the goddesses uh, I understood I am more Hestia archetype woman and also helped me understand a lot about myself. Good. Um, I don't remember which student it was, but one of the students said her brother uh, fell in love with this very beautiful woman who basically seduced them and you know, convinced him to marry her and he wanted to marry her and the parents were really upset. And then she, as soon as they were married, right? She starts getting really nasty. And on the fourth day, she divorces them, but she had, but the family had agreed to pay a lot of money. So she got, the family is having to, you know, collect money to pay because uh, he had to pay to marry her. And then she, after four days, she went back to her boyfriend. 
So that that is really bad, right? That's an example of women using their physical good looks to attract men sexually and get rich. And that's yeah, perfect. yeah that's the worst of the worst. Um, I don't and and the person who wrote that doesn't have to say you know point out who they are if you know it's hard on the family, but um, I do feel really badly for that family, but it is a very classic case. And that's why I say that Aphrodite, that's purely sexual attraction is very dangerous. And it just seems like everybody knows that women know that and men know that, and they're willing to forget everything else to go for it. And that's, that's why the myth of Psyche and Eros is really good, right? Eros left Aphrodite and went to Psyche because that's where real love is. It's in a woman who's juggling. Does that make sense? Yes, Professor. And it isn't a sentimental story, you know? A lot of my students are writing about women that have done amazing things. You know, sometimes they just choose to stay single to support their sister and her children because her husband died. You know, all of this stuff that's really heroic and it's very much uh, a life based on eros, love. Uh, it just doesn't get in the newspaper. Professor? Yeah? Professor, can you hear me? I don't hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, good. Bondona, what do you have? Uh, Ma'am, like what I understood, like uh, from like Sophia's story, like uh, is that like uh, in my place, like we, we live in a village area. So like uh, omens are like, they support their family, uh, family by walking in the tea gardens. And like, uh, they always work very hard, uh, means means they work hard, like more women work in the garden than like men. So like they support each other uh, in, in doing good things and like, uh, and also to support their family. But like one is that, one thing is that, um, uh, while working, they like point out like go they gossip a lot of things about their relatives or, or Oops, I guess I lost you, Bontona. Bondona. So I I'll get back to you, okay? I'll call on you again when we when we, you know, when we finish here. Asbina, do you have something? Oh, she's writing the chat books too. Okay, so I'll go to the chat box after everybody who can talk, talks. Newsrat, do you have something? Yes, Professor. Uh, I found that conversation reflecting on uh, after reading it, I feel like uh, here, everyone is just blaming everyone. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Okay. I, I got disconnected. Like, oh uh, yeah, I was saying that like, uh, it's creates problem for the people, like uh, whoever hear their story and like, uh, it's create a problem in the family. Like uh, people like used to say, you say this thing to me and the other will say, you say this thing to me. Like they will miss the go and like what I will say means the conversation to uh, takes place in such a way that like they started hating each other, and like uh, uh, the man in the family or like one understanding woman or the uh, grand uh, grandparents they will again come between them and they will uh, take out God wisdom means God like uh, things from Ramayan or like uh, the holy book uh, Gita and like they will say that uh, God have uh, said not to fight even if you hate uh, hate uh, what will what you will get after hating each other it will be problem for you itself and like again they will 
just get patch up and again like after two days again it will happen like that like lives are going that that way and like yes uh, like women in our place are very supportive to each other uh, in uh, yeah, whenever they need help means like we are from very low low cost uh, uh, in our place so like uh, going to for higher study is very tough so like uh, people uh, come in a, means in a to get uh, people always come together and like they whoever is good in which field they support like uh, the way they can like even they will gather money uh, even for one rupees also is it's okay one one rupees is also okay for every one of us so they will gather it and like they will give to the person who need it like they always do it and like uh, and it's very uh, it's very good that people are very supportive uh, to each other and like it shows uh, uh, a respect towards uh, means uh, respect towards their uh, the way whatever they have the whatever quality ha they have they support each other okay so so again there's I love to hear about these different villages and different contexts the students come from. I think, I hope everybody else does too. But um, again, when Aphrodite is a threat, right? When women feel like their husbands could be unfaithful or something, uh, whenever people feel threatened, they get angry because anger is a secondary emotion, right? It's based on fear. And so, you know, it would be best if men would control themselves and not do that. That's by far the best. But at least women should should um, not let the men destroy their relationships, right? That's what's so important, that they keep the focus where it is, and then they come together. Uh, and it is sad that that whole um, vision carrier that impulse, you know, to carry each other's visions forward gets corrupted. And that's why, you know, you have to just see it differently. You have to just uh, find a completely different way of thinking about um, your drive and your vision. Um, so Fahima, what have you got? Did you already talk? Please, sir, I was saying. <laughs> did you have something to say i was saying and then Bogdan started so i couldn't say okay so let's see okay so uh oh so you're just writing it for me or Okay, so two people said they wrote in the chat box, but I don't see it. So, um, all right, who's yeah. next? Um, who hasn't presented yet? Rupia? Me, Professor. Professor, I didn't. Oh, Rossi, sorry. Okay, Rossi, go ahead. Hi, Professor. Um, so after I read the article, um, I was actually intrigued by the different conversations that Sophia had with the goddesses. But a point that I want to make was that her conversation with Hera shows that we all have weaknesses that can interfere with our main goal. Like all the goddesses all want to get rid of the patriarchal world, yet their weaknesses can sometimes get the best of them and it can cause their um, goals to be, wait, how do I phrase this? Like they can't reach their goals at a certain time frame that they want to because they are focused on trying to get other women down instead of helping each other and lifting each other up. And um, in the real world, I think that 
if women are to be like those goddesses and having their weaknesses get the best of them, we will get nowhere and we will still be in this patriarchal world. But if we choose to make a difference and if we choose to lift each other up and be each other's vision carriers, then we will see positive changes real fast. Okay, good. Okay, so, you know, culturally, it's really hard to know, you know, when to get rid of the patriarchy, but the thing that can always remind you is the weather, right? Or the earth, it's right in front of your face, you know, the air, the water, the earth. And that to me is just a constant reminder, right? I live on the earth and um, we're trying to save that. So you just do what you can, you know, it's way too complicated to think of patriarchy and where do I try to change that? But you know right away you got to do something because of the, the climate issues. Uh, let's see. Now I've lost track of who, I'm just going to call some names so I don't have any notes. And then, Professor. yeah, Nahida, you were the one. Go ahead, Nahida. Uh, actually, uh discussion between Sophie and goddesses is very effective uh, to understand the characters of the goddesses clearly, more clearly. While uh, uh, Sophia was uh, claimed her concern about towards Athena for ignoring the needs to mothers and children. So Athena defeated by saying that sometimes it is important for her to uh, keep civilization alive. Most of the goddesses tried to defeat Sophia through their own logic. However, the goddesses are very devoted towards their sacred passion. It is very surprising when some of them were uh, admitting themselves as powerful one and was bothering about others' activities. But at the end of the day, I realize own strength and weaknesses. It is all about creating self-awareness, which help us help us. Sometimes we can compromise with others' opinion for the sake of living together. Okay, good. Um, let's see, Newsrat, was were you going to go in the chat? Because I I didn't see. Oh, professor, I started and Bandona started. So I couldn't okay, see. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I was saying that I found that conversation reflecting on real life. And uh, after reading <clears throat> it, I found that uh, everyone is just blaming everyone. Okay, everyone has both good and bad characteristics, but if they could collaborate each other, I think the environment could have been more sustainable. And uh, besides like they will do things what they're capable of, but when others expect you to do things more than your ability, you can't do that. So even in societies, we see situations like this every day. Like if someone is in the big authority, then whatever happens in life, we just blame them. But instead, I think it's crucial to stay united and solve things what comes like in our way. Uh, what upsets me is that if a woman is going on top or being successful, the other should encourage her or to get like motivated seeing her, but people do not do that. Even the women start criticizing them. And uh, if the men don't support them, okay, that makes sense. But when women do that, like it really doesn't make any sense to me. So rather, like, I think they should support other women because they also should prove those men wrong that we are independent and we can do whatever we want to do i mean whatever we want uh to not what those men want us to do so like uh like you discussed previously things like that happened with me as well when i was in college we wanted to open like clubs for supporting other girls uh when they face difficulties and all but then again if the woman who is in power doesn't want to support women, then really you can't do that. So we couldn't do it as well because uh, you need a proof from the authority and that she is also a woman, but she doesn't want to support us. So yeah, it's something like that. That's what I found. It, it is, it is um, I know a lot of you had stories. Um, 
and you know there's a lot of obstacles but i think each of you is in a country where there are enough there aren't a lot but there are enough women who did get over sexual assault and start a nonprofit or get over this so you do have some archetypes in your head and then what you know is that every year there's more and more of them and so you're part of something that every year is going to get better and better so you need to be a pioneer right you need to be a leader in that but you aren't you know you aren't starting from zero you're starting from a few examples and then a few more right so i think it does get easier over time and then to me, always having the weather and the climate in the background is just a constant motivator because it's not, you know, that is not going to go away and it's not going to get better. And so that's definitely a reason to always inspire yourself and each other. It's like Mother Nature is always inspiring me because I know she matters, right? Um, so that's great. Um, Rupia, did you have something to say? Okay, um, Rook Nine. Okay, uh, Margia. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay, so let me try the. Okay, okay. So Asbina. Um, Okay, she knows a woman. Okay, now she's got an example. Um, and, uh, okay, she's gotten married with eight men total. Okay, so yeah, I, I like the stories too. I, I don't think we have time for, for stories, but they're great and I love reading them and I'm gonna you know make them into a book so everybody else can read them. So that's, that's great. Um, okay, let's see. So as being- So could you please talk about a bit about the assignment? Yeah, well, that's why I wanted to give everyone a chance to talk and then I'm gonna talk about the assignment, but I wanna make sure everyone who had a chance to talk has talked. Um, so is there anybody else who wants? Okay, so the next thing to do, and that's the screen share, um, so you just do your usual post for today, right? And then the post for next time doesn't have a lot of reading. It just has an outline because you have to be working on your paper, right? So here's the screen share about the paper. Now, I assume all of you know, you know, you write papers and so, um, Here's my rubric, and I think my rubric is pretty generic. Um, and uh, you are required to meet with me in a conference. So during that conference, we will hammer out a thesis statement, right? So I want to, you to come to me with the beginnings of your idea of what you want to write. So what I want you to write in your thesis is who am I, right? Who am I relative to the goddesses um, based on what, right? So when you were in grade school, what were you like when junior high, high school, college, whatever, right? So you could say, well, I've already said that, but you've only said it in little bits. I mean, I want uh, you to write an essay about yourself, that the parts fit the whole, right? And so you could say, okay, I think this is my main one, uh, but I also have exercised these other ones at various points so far in my life, but this is where I want to go in life. And this is where I know I'm going to have to kick in these other goddesses, right? And then also, do you know that you have a tendency 
to be very critical of a certain kind of woman or a certain kind of behavior, right? It really annoys me when I see women obsessing about their looks, right? Well, so how can I be more patient with them? Um, on the one hand, you could say, okay, that's somebody with probably an Aphrodite archetype is different than when it's gotten corrupted by the patriarchy, right? And so, so in your own mind, you can separate out that, yeah, some women are just sensuous and that's fine, but then when they get obsessed. And so, you know, you could have, you can be more forgiving. And then if you somehow can talk to them and have a good conversation with them, uh, that would be nice, right? Or at least if you could have a set of girlfriends that you can talk to about this so that you can release your resentments, you know, so that dark side is released, right? You can admit that this, per this woman really annoys me and then someone will talk to you about it and you can figure out why and then you can get released so you can be more creative. Um, you're not just sucking it up and moving forward. You're actually flushing out that stuff. So, so in general, I want the paper to be about, okay, I think I'm basically a Hestia, but I, I tend to fade too much into myself and I need to learn how to come out. I mean, just this past week, when I was listening to papers at paper conferences, um, there was one day, because it's three at a time, right? You get one hour, one hour, one hour, and you're in three sessions. Well, I always have comments to make, always. And so the third time I got my hand up, but I got called on first. And I said, I'll wait because other people haven't had their first chance which seems reasonable, but there is a young man, I don't know, he's in his late thirties, but, but he likes talking to me. And so we were talking yesterday after for an hour and a half. And he said, now you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have stepped down. And people wanted to listen to you. You have something to say. <laughs> so I still do it. Um, and so, so just, self-correct like that, right? And then realize with, I had to learn how to be a lot more assertive for a while, right? And then I had to learn how to be managerial and obviously that's not my forte. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see it in me that I have weaknesses and strengths. Um, anyway, so, but you wanna see it in you, right? So far, where am I? Where do I want to go? What are my weaknesses? What are my strengths? Um, and then I do want you to think about if you'd like to make sure you, you get a group of uh, girlfriends, right? That build up some solidarity that you'd have a long-term friendship with so that you can support each other through these various ups and downs and you know, some of you will become wives or mothers and just sort of see each other through. Um, and I've, I have a few friends like that. One of them married a guy who's HIV positive, but, and so she sort of had to plan for having her husband die. And, but he hasn't died. <laughs> she's been, you know, she's been married now over 20 years, but it was just kind of like, that was, that was the bet. And so I never thought one of my friends would marry a, you know, a guy that's HIV positive. And then I had another friend and we're 44 years old having an argument about which is worse, to be a widow or to be divorced. <laughs> I, like, I never anticipated when she became my friend, you know, 20 years before that we would have that debate because her husband died suddenly, really suddenly, 45 minutes. Um, and then she had to deal with kids who had lost their dad and never got to say goodbye. And, you know, it's life. But 
because they've been my friends forever, it's just nice. I have this whole history with my friends. So, so I, you know, I hope that that maybe you would think of that as something you sort of want. I know AUW provides just a huge opportunity for you to develop that kind of a culture and develop those kinds of friends. And so, but anyway, that's what I want you to write your paper on so that you can be your own vision carrier, right? You can formulate your vision. You can think about, well, how am I gonna keep my own vision going, right? What do I need? Um, so we will work out a thesis together and then you have to have arguments. You know, how do you wanna organize this? And then, um, so I, you know, I'll work with you on, you have premises and then you draw inferences from that. And I can explain how that'll play itself out when we're working out what you wanna say. I do want you at least three times to go back to the text and refer to it because I do want you to show that you're learning from reading other people's works, that they have changed your mind. This isn't a paper you could have written um, a month ago or five weeks ago. And then you have examples to support your thoughts. And then you have, you know, what is your weakness? Um, how do I wanna make sure I don't get derailed? I don't get distracted. Um, and then you have to have the usual English kind of stuff, paragraphing, you have topics and your grammar. This is, you know, writing seminar. So, and then some of the papers will, the grade, whether you get an A or a B will probably depend upon how complex your thesis is and how complete it is and how creative it is. So again, we'll just talk about it. I think for a lot of you, it's just how much time you can put into it is gonna make the difference. Or for some of you, you came with better English skills than others. Um, so it's just that I think, I, you know, I don't give that many C's because I, I would, but I think most of the students are pretty good. So, you know, um, I'm not a hard grader, but I actually think students work on my papers. Anyway, so how it applies. And then I want you to see yourself as a woman at a time in history when women are creating this culture. So it isn't just about you, it's significant, right? And then the idea that you'd wanna pass something on to your own children, if you have, or your daughters or your friends' children. Um, and then I do have this related to lions specifically, and I left that in because it is the same uh, qualities of every liberal liberal arts institution. So um, you're committed to truth, all these things, and then you're uniting reason and faith. So if you want to bring in, like if you come from a Hindu background or a Muslim background, if you wanted to bring in Islam or um, the Gita, that, that's fine. And that's great. I, that, I teach another course where that's kind of the central focus. Um, but that's, that's something else. It can be a religious view or it can just be your idea of how to be a flourishing woman, which of course, all the goddesses together, Sophia, is the flourishing woman. So, so that's, those are the requirements. And then it's a thousand words, which is not super long. And I don't make heavy demands on the bibliographies or the footnotes or the work cited. All you have to do is, is in parentheses beside those quotes, just put the page number on and the name of the chapter you know, you had this attachment. It was chapter three, page so-and-so. That's all. I'm not gonna be very picky about that. Um, and then I would like you to make appointments with me for, well, you don't have to make an appointment. I will be in my office from um, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Bangladesh time, 
8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, U.S. time. And is it possible for you to like share an sample paper? Well, actually, this is where I don't have a sample paper because um, last year we had a spring break the first week of March, and then the papers were due right after that. And then on Tuesday of that week, the campus shut down, and then the students started uh, having their papers posted online. But before that, they were all just by hand. They just handed them to me. But so after this assignment, like I have all the research papers from last year that I will send to you, and I have all the assignments from now on, but not this one. Um, it's just that I'll work with you on it. If this one I don't think is too hard. The research ones I think will be nice for you to be able to read. Oh, professor, uh, do we have chance any draft uh, draft paper? Um, well, I what I want you to do, if you want to do a draft, you'll have to hand it in earlier, okay? Um, okay. Because again, I it's probably not true of AUW students. But if I tell Lyon students that you have a chance to rewrite, the first paper isn't going to be very good, you know, because they're going to, I get to rewrite anyway. And so I want you to take the first draft seriously and to actually make your best effort. Um, and then because some of you came, you know, had a better education before you got there, I don't want to punish you. Um, but I do want everyone to make a good faith effort. And then they aren't due. The final due date isn't until the 12th. But if you want to do an early draft, um, you need to get it in by the 8th. Okay? Does that make sense, Poppy? Yes, Professor. Yeah, okay. And I hope that I'll remember to post that. But just everybody write it down. If you want a sec a time a chance to write a second draft hand it in by next monday otherwise a week you know a week from friday um okay any other questions because it's 9 40 time to go um not yet professor okay just i'll be here from 8 to 11 tomorrow <laughs> Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. We'll see you. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you, Professor. Bye-bye. Oh. Wait a sec. I got to stop the recording. Okay. <laughs>